Hello and welcome back to And That's a Fact, the show where we take our subjective opinions and turn them into definitive, objective fact. I'm Neil Adamson. And I'm Rick Papandrea. And as you can tell from the title of this video, this is our breakdown for our upcoming ultimate bracket of comic book movies. Yeah, if you're unfamiliar with what we've been doing here on the channel, we're, our ultimate brackets are basically us taking a genre or subgroup of films or, or uh, studios, you know, different films from a studio and putting them all together in a head-to-head, -head, well not head-to-head, -head, but a March Madness style bracket to see who comes out on top, who is the champion of that genre. Yes, so this is going to be 64 films all going up against each other in four sub-brackets. Each bracket has a champion, that's the final four, and then they go up against each other to get the ultimate movie winner. Yeah, and in terms of determining these champions and, and the winners of each match, we don't choose that based on our own personal preference. That is where you guys come in. It is all based on your votes. Yeah, this is super important. If you guys don't vote, we're just a couple of dummies flapping our gums. So that's a thing that old people say, and I guess I'm an old person. Um, <laughs> And we're going to be posting these matchups every week, uh, maybe on Twitter, maybe on a um, like a Survey Monkey kind of place. We're still we're still trying to figure out what works. We w we were doing Facebook for our last one, but um, that kind of was too much on people's feeds, and it was just a lot, and it was not easy. Yeah, and we're trying to figure out a way to streamline this. So whatever we end up doing, the uh, the the link for your way to vote will be in the description of this video and each video after. Right, and we should say we're not going to start voting right when this uh, video is up. We're going to give it another day or two because Infinity War just came out and um, we want to make sure that we have enough time for everyone to see it and also to make sure that all the movies are seated properly. And we'll talk more about that in a later. But Yeah, we'll uh, jump into that. But Make sure you vote, though even if it's not ready right when you first see this video. Yeah, so we were talking about how we've done this before. We did it with a, um, a Disney Pixar bracket, and uh, we thought that it went really, really well. A lot of the matches, a lot of the uh, outcomes were surprising to us. They didn't necessarily go the way we thought they would. We're still finishing that bracket up, so we actually are getting into our final four now. So if you're interested in that, you can jump on, check out some of those other breakdown videos, and vote on these last few matches. But with Infinity War coming out and, you know, comic book movie season on us, you know, going into yeah. the summer movie season, uh, we wanted to do something that really captured everybody's excitement with that genre, and it, we had to kind of figure that out a little bit. So Yeah, there's a little bit of a problem if we say that we want to do superhero movies, because that opens up a whole can of worms, like, well, what's a superhero movie? Yeah, you could include films like Unbreakable, or Chronicle, or, you know, any number of film where a character gets some sort of superpowers. Uh, Power Rangers, for example. Right. <laughs> like When you start including those movies um, into that group, it starts a really slippery slope because there's so many films out there where you could say, well, that, that's technically a superhero right. film. Right, I mean, like, does Robin Hood count or King Arthur? They're, they're kind of, or like any Hercules movie. Uh, well, and, and, and if you take away, like... Even even further than that, that complicates stuff even more because if you have a film with a character that doesn't have superpowers, do like they not Batman? Get, <laughs> do they not go into that bracket right. like Batman or Kick Ass? Like you have a lot of other films. So other other channels, other websites have done like top fifty superhero movies and other things like that. Um, and I feel like they kind of sometimes ran into that problem. A lot of people were disagreeing with what should be on that list because they didn't think it qualified for that genre. And so in order to avoid that, we wanted to make sure that we weren't being too subjective in our choices because there are literally hundreds of thousands of films, if we said superhero movies, that we right. could choose from. So we wanted to be very specific about our criteria. So we decided we were going to do 
comic book movies. Those are movies that have been turned into feature films, so we're not looking at TV, um, from a comic book source material, comic book or graphic novel, which is, you know, very slight difference there. So that narrows it down, but okay, we still got over a thousand films. So we're gonna add some more criteria. No, uh, or sorry, the, of that thousand films, some are made for TV, some are direct to video, some are animated, some are TV crossover events like the CW DC events. That's, that's two hours. Does that count as a movie or four hours? Really? Like, yeah. you know, how do we, so we have these really specific criteria that Neil came up with uh, to make sure it was totally objective uh, and, and, and fair. Yeah, so our first criteria that we started with is it needs to be a it needs to come from an English language comic book source material. Um so that basically excludes like Japanese like manga and and other other foreign um comic books that you know they definitely have merit and you could definitely include them in this discussion but we didn't want to widen the scope too much. We wanted to keep it a little bit more uh, limited that was going to be yeah, more not- familiar with U.S. audiences. Right. Nothing against those movies at all, but we have to narrow it down some way. And, and the second way we narrowed it down was that uh, every film that was going to be included needed to be live action. Uh, so no animation. Again, nothing against animation, but we're just narrowing it down. Um, feature length. <clears throat> so not TV not uh, like shorts or one-offs or anything like that. And it has to be produced in the United States. Uh, So we're talking about the studio system in the United States in Hollywood, basically. Yeah, and and some some films have partial production, like they may be a French-American production or something like that where they're partly produced somewhere else, but it needs to have um, one of one of the producing companies needs to be basically a U.S. based like Hollywood based company, um, and that basically got us down to about 150 films. Now we're trying to get down to 64. So our next criteria that we added in was that it needed to have a wide U.S. theatrical release and a box office total of over 40 million dollars. And that we put that in there to ensure that enough people have seen this film because if it, you know, small indies that yeah, had small limited releases and only gain only got like uh, you know two million at the box office, no one's gonna really know about those. Even if right, they- we want this to be fun. You guys are voting. No one's gonna have fun or want to vote in a competition if you haven't heard of some of the movies. So we want this to be easily accessible, yep. like comic book movies. They're popcorn, right? This is, this is enjoyable. enjoyable. I yeah. can talk. So, so we ended up, after that last criteria, we ended up with 110. And, and we kind of felt, okay, that's, that's a good starting point. Um, because ultimately, in the way that we do these, we take the top 16 of each sub-bracket. So you're not necessarily, just because you fit those criteria, that, that doesn't mean you're in the bracket. It means you're eligible for the bracket. Right. So of that 110, we still needed to cut it almost in half down to 64. And this is where we start figuring out our sub-brackets. So there are two, uh, obviously, really major United States-based comic book, pub, comic book publishers, Marvel and Detective Comics DC. Uh, DC Comics has 20 feature films, and Marvel has 64. 46. And then there are obviously a lot of independent publishers, and that accounts for a num- uh, another 30, sorry, excuse me, 44 films, which gives us three brackets, but that doesn't work. Yeah, so we had, you know, we had 46 Marvel films and 44, like, smaller company films, and we wanted to try to divide these up evenly. Obviously, the 20 for DC, that in its own, that has to be its own bracket because it's, it's 16 films, so 20 is a perfect number for what we want to start out of. But that 46 and that 44, we had to kind of decide which one are we splitting up into two brackets. And it made the most sense to split Marvel up because of... It's Marvel, you know, because of the MCU, because of what that studio has done with that one whole continuity. And now they're at 19 films with Infinity War. So that really kind of put us in a really good spot where we have 19 films for an MCU sub-bracket, 
27 for a non-MCU uh, sub-bracket, 20 for a DC sub-bracket, and then 44 for an independent sub-bracket. Uh, that's right. And so the way that we then decided which of those, you know, 19, 27, 20, and 44 made it in was the same way that we seeded the, the Disney and the Pixar films. We went to Rotten Tomatoes and we found the ones with the highest scores with the most critics and we seeded that as number one and we just went down the line and it was the top 16 that made it in. Yeah, again, we're trying to be as objective as possible going into this so we don't run into problems with people arguing about what should be or shouldn't be in there. Obviously, people are going to have their own personal preferences about those things, but we didn't want to say, hey, we were just choosing based on what we like. We wanted to be choosing based on a critical consensus. Right, Um, that's kind of the whole point of this channel is that we're determining the facts of this. It's not based on our opinions, except that sometimes it is. But it's based on, 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 you know, a sort of consensus and ob- as objective as we can be about, about these movies. And also, we just didn't want people telling us that we were wrong because we have really, we, we hurt our feelings. Really yeah, easily, so. we have really fragile egos. So. Yeah, 100%. Um, but basically, the top 16 make it into each of those sub-brackets, which um, in some of those brackets, I mean, you have wildly different degrees of critical response uh, between films like DC films and Marvel films. And like, so in some of those making it in the top 16 meant that you were, you had to be scoring a 70% or higher, you know, in the seventies on Rotten Tomatoes. In some, it meant you had to have a 20%. So, <laughs> and, and, I, and I mean, we're obviously talking about, about DC there, but that's just cause they had the fewest number of films to, to pull from. Yeah. Um, and, and after the first round, it ends up be getting gone. to a point yeah. where everybody is, hopefully, I mean, we might have some, you know, some, uh, underdogs that, that bust through with a, a really low critical score. That but, would be very interesting, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but uh, based on what what the assumed idea is, the, the top half of each of these 16 is usually, they're all pretty much in line with one another. It's the bottom yeah. half that, that kind of really start going downhill. So right. um, we're going to first go through the top half of this bracket. That means um, it's time to reveal uh, the bracket. Ready yeah. to see it? Yeah, so uh, without further ado, this is the top half, and this is our Marvel half. Marvel Studios half. We that s- means we're going to be finding out the best Marvel movie to go up against the winner from the other half of the bracket. Yes. So DC's kind of, uh, you know, not getting... It doesn't have enough films to really get a... a um, its own half of the bracket. Um, so it'll be combined with the independent, you know, the smaller other comic book companies. Um, and then, but this bracket is basically what is the best Marvel film overall. Yeah. Um, so our first half, uh, the first 16 is our MCU bracket. And that starts with the number one seed Black Panther versus the number 16 seed Avengers Age of Ultron. Yep, and then we're moving on. Uh, The next match is going to be the number 8 seed Doctor Strange versus the number 9 seed Captain America, the Winter Soldier. The winners of both of those matches will go up against each other in the next round. Uh, The next match is Spider-Man Homecoming, the the 5 seed versus Ant-Man, which is a 12 seed. And the winner of that match will face the winner of this match, uh, the number 4 seed The Avengers, or that's Avengers Assemble for our UK friends. Uh, versus Iron Man 3, which is the 13 seed. Then we've got Captain America Civil War as the 6 seed going up against the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, which is the, uh, an 11 seed. And uh, that winner will face the winner of Thor Ragnarok, which is the number 3 seed, uh, versus uh, Captain America the First Avenger, which is the first Captain America movie, and it's a 14 seed. Then we've got the first Guardians of the Galaxy film as a 7 seed going up against Avengers Infinity War as a number 10 seed. Which, again, may change depending upon the next few days and what critic reviews come in. So we may have to shuffle this bracket around if that changes, but it seems unlikely at this point. Uh, And the final match of the MCU bracket is... Iron Man, which is the number two seed, versus Thor, which is the number 15 seed. 
Yeah, talking about, you know, Infinity War, obviously we both have a lot of thoughts on that, but we don't want to get into any spoilers and we don't want to spend this entire thing, this entire episode. Because we've already talking talked about, about Infinity War for about six hours this weekend. <laughs> so. Um, so, but just so you guys know, uh, Infinity War right now is sitting at like an 84 and 86%, somewhere like that on Rotten Tomatoes, uh, which conveniently is the gap between uh, all the Marvel films. Uh, there's, there's there's a group that is 89% and up, and there's a group that's 83% and down. And Infinity Wars fit right into that into that uh, group. And, so it uh, seems unlikely that it will move, but on the off chance that it does, just as a heads up, it may. Yes. Um, so we're going to give it a little bit more time, but pretty much all the critics that have reviews that count on Rotten Tomatoes their scores are pretty much in, we yeah. would assume. So that's if, probably if they haven't where watched it's going it yet, they're pretty bad at doing their job. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so just looking at this, uh, I think if Infinity War stays there, Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one, up against Infinity War, I think is going to be an interesting match. Uh, just because we have a lot of people that are very loyal to the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise, and especially to that first film, which is, is ranked a little higher than the second. Um, Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, I'm looking at Iron Man versus Thor, too. It's surprising to me how far apart these are. Uh, Thor is a 15 seed, but I think both of these movies are going to be really strong heavy hitters out of the gate. I think this is a lot like if you watched our Disney Pixar bracket, this is like our, our Pixar bracket, where it's all incredibly high quality films, every battle. There's no, there's not going to be a clear winner for really any of these. Anybody could win. They're all so good that it's it's really uh, going to be a challenge for all of them. No one's going to have an easy match. Yeah, and I think in general for all of these all of these matches and all of these brackets, um, what you're going to see different from our Disney Pixar bracket is that once we get into the second round, things are going to start becoming a lot more difficult for every single bracket. Whereas I think. And the Disney bracket, Pixar, every single round was hard. But for some of the other brackets, it wasn't until they got to like the Sweet 16 or Elite 8 that it started becoming, oh, this is a difficult matchup. Um, yeah. And I, even just looking down this, I'm going to have a hard time choosing Thor Ragnarok versus Captain America, the first Avenger. That's hard for me. All of these are hard for me. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, all of, the Aven all of the Captain America films, in my opinion, are, you know, regardless of where they're ranked, they all... They're, they're, that is the strongest trilogy of any of the MCU films, in my opinion. And so I think each one of those films is going to really be putting, putting up a fight against whatever it comes up against. And I mean, I would say the th same about Thor. I think that's a very strong trilogy as well. I know that they're some of the lower ranked films, but... Um... I mean, Loki is such a fan favorite and Thor is such a fan favorite that I think we can't count them out either. Um, and just because probably Tom Hiddleston and, and Chris Hemsworth are two of the most handsome men on the planet. Uh, well, and then the other, in addition to those two you know, franchises with those two characters, you've got the first Avengers film, which right. you know a lot of people, I think now people are liking Age of Ultron a little bit more, but uh, the first Avengers film has a very special place in a lot of people's hearts. Absolutely. I, yeah, it's mine included. I think, I mean, if I'm looking at this bracket, honestly, it would not surprise me if it came down to the first Avengers film versus Infinity War in, in what would it be the final four. Which like, would be a, a pretty exciting, uh, you know, way to kind of celebrate the release of Infinity War. Yeah. But I think uh, Black Panther as the number one seed, it's number one for a reason. And I think that that is going to probably be, you know, that top half has some tough competitors because I think a lot of people think the Winter Soldier, you know, is, is in their top three for it's, MCU yeah, films. Yeah, it's very high for me. And, and Black Panther, you know, for most people was the first time Marvel did a villain correctly. I thought that Homecoming and, and even Loki in the first Avengers film were, were done pretty well. Oh yeah, um, I love Loki. He's, he's one of my favorite characters in the whole MCU. But the argument for Black Panther can't be understated, just like it, its success at the box office can't be, yeah. it shouldn't have been underestimated, it, because that movie did amazing. So it's a number one seed for a reason, and it could very well end up taking this entire bracket. I would not be surprised. Yeah. 
Should but we go what on do you, to the next what do you see what do you see get going all the way? Do you think it will be in, in if it turns going out to all be all the way? In, if yeah. I have to pick just one, I'm going to say The Avengers. If I have to pick just one movie to go all the way, I think that's probably the one to do it. Um, just because it was I mean it was the first time we saw the Ruffalo Hulk, which is mm-hmm. so, so many people's favorites. Um, it was the first it was I mean it's it's one of the most important moments in my mind, in cinema history, in the past, in, since the, its inception, because oh yeah, you know it's it's like without a doubt, yeah, yeah, it, it's just this huge moment, and that you know that that sweeping shot where they're all together, and it's what people have been waiting for since these characters were invented in the '60s or '40s. Well, it was a grand experiment in filmmaking, and yeah. it was an experiment that worked, and ever since then. So many other films, not just comic book films, but so right. many other studios have been trying to emulate what the MCU did with their idea of that connected universe and yeah, coming together. Yeah, I mean, this is a thing that, like, it's it's as important to the scope of American cinema as, you know, color being introduced was, or musicals being introduced, where it's like, this is a thing where it worked, it made a ton of money, and then everyone else was like, we need that. We got we to gotta start doing that. Look how much money it's making. And I, it, that can't be overstated. I think, though, the difficulty is that it, that one film isn't necessarily responsible for that change in, in the mindset about filmmaking and this, this connected universe because it wasn't the film that started it. It was the film that Coleman, you know, that brought it all together. Right. But the film that started this was Iron Man, the first Iron Man, which still is a wonderful film, and I think yep. that one definitely has a chance to have some legs in this. Uh, I um. certainly agree. That that moment, the <coughs> first, that 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 ending moment of Iron Man when he's he's doing the press conference and he just says, "I am Iron Man," and the the, the hard cut to the the Iron Man song and the credits, and then if you remember, that movie had a tag. And it was Sam Jackson saying, I'm here to talk to you yep. about the Avengers initiative. And like, Way, yep. and like in 2008, this is like a, a pants-pooping well, moment. And, for, and we, for can, we can get into this uh, another time because we can talk we so will. much about this. But the, the best part about that, in my opinion, is the fact that they didn't start trying to connect stuff in the films until they got really like into the second half of Phase 2. You know, then they started yeah. really trying to connect it. In the most part, it was it was post credit scenes. Then they started yeah. connecting the films more, and and you know we can discuss all the differences between MCU and what other places have done, other studios have done. But we'll get into all that when we talk about uh, these matchups and the MCU bracket. I want to move on, start talking about some of the other brackets that we've got. So our next bracket, which the winner of the MCU is going to go up against the winner of this, this is our non-MCU Marvel bracket. So That's, And Marvel movies produced by Fox, which would be um, the X-Men by Sony, which would be the Spider-Man movies. Even New Line and Universal have some in there. Yep. And so that's this bracket. And there were a couple other films, but we, we just have those four on the tag because those four <coughs> are the only ones that actually made it in to the brackets. So um, the first uh, match that we have is the number one seed, Logan, up against the number 16 seed, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And just as a reminder, when it's The Amazing Spider-Man, that's Andrew Garfield uh, and not Tobey Maguire. Uh, and our next match is X-Men, that's the 2000 film, uh, that's our 8 seed, versus The Amazing Spider-Man, that's the first Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movie. At the number 9 seed, yep. Yeah, and the next, the next match is X-Men First Class, is the number 5, versus Hulk at the 12. And this is, this is the Eric Bana Hulk. This is not the Incredible Hulk with Edward Norton that was part of the MCU. Um, this is the one they did a few years prior to that. Yep. Uh, going up next is Spider-Man. That's the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. That's our number four seed. Going up against X-Men The Last Stand, which is the 13 seed. That's the third of the first X-Men trilogy, I believe, right? Yep, yep. Um, then we've got X2, X-Men United, the second of that first trilogy, uh, as a six seed. Going up against Spider-Man 3, the third of Sam Raimi's trilogy of Spider-Man, which is the number 11 seed. Right. And after that, uh, we have X-Men Days of Future Past, which is the third seed. That's the recent, pretty recent one. 
going up against Blade 2, which is the 14 seed. Then we get into Deadpool, uh, excuse me, Deadpool, which is the number 7 seed against the Wolverine at the number 10 seed. And uh, our final match of this chunk of the bracket is Spider-Man 2. Uh, that's the Dr. Octopus one, which is our number 2 seed versus Blade, the 15 seed. Yeah, so just looking at this bracket, I don't think the first round has too many difficult matchups. Which is the which is the most difficult, do you think? Uh, in the first round, um, I would say probably in my for certain people, I think it it might be the X Men Days of Future Past versus Blade Two, but I think for more people, it's going to be Deadpool versus the Wolverine. I'm inclined to agree. Those movies, I really enjoyed both of them, but neither were my favorite movie ever, and I think that's going to be the hardest one for me to choose anyway. Yeah. Um, it, the other thing, you know, X-Men, the first X-Men, it's a little dated, but it really is kind of responsible for um, the, the comic book movie revolution that happened right at the end of the millennium. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, if and, you remember, you know, going looking at the 90s, we had Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, which were sort of these camp fests that were not designed to be good movies. They were just designed to be kind of fun ways to sell toys. But then in 2000, we had X-Men. And in 2002, we had uh, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. And that really set the stage for a world where the MCU could exist. Without those movies, I think we wouldn't have an MCU. Well, absolutely. And it also set the stage for films like uh, Batman Begins and and the Dark Knight absolutely. Trilogy and this more realistic approach to the world of a comic book um, story. And you know, with that, we end up getting a film eventually, all these years later, like Logan, which in this bracket... I think is the clear winner of all of this. I mean, you could make an argument for films like Spider-Man 2, which a lot of people have said is the best superhero film of all time. Yeah, for me, Logan was great, but I mean, I'm a big X-Men fan and I'm a big Spider-Man fan. And those Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, the first one and the second one, and X-Men First Class, I think are both going to have some, are all going to have some legs in this bracket, but Logan too. Yeah, and I think on the X-Men front, other than that original X-Men movie, to me, I think Days of Future Past is probably one of the strongest that, that could go pretty far. Uh, I know you talked about before the show, First Class. Yeah, First Class, um, obviously versus Hulk, I think that that's an easy winner. Uh, but if it comes down to us, X-Men First Class versus Spider-Man, that'll be a really tough challenge, I think. Uh, First Class... You know, in all those X-Men movies that started coming out in 2000, we used to hear about how Magneto and, and Professor X were friends, and we finally get to see that in first class. And I think that that movie has so much heart because of the relationship between these, these two guys. And I think yeah. that it could, go, it could go a long way in this bracket, at least personally. If well, I were, if I and were. it was brilliant because you had such iconic, you know, pardon the pun, juggernauts uh, playing... <laughs> Um, you know, Magneto and Professor X in the first three films that it was, it, there were some big shoes to fill. And I think what Michael Fassbender and, um, um, McAvoy, McAvoy did was amazing because it gave us, you know, a different way to see them and, and they portrayed them so great. So I think that, you know, some of those films, um, they've got a good chance, but another one we can't count out at all is Deadpool. And I said the Deadpool versus the Wolverine might be close, but I do think Deadpool is going to be one that is going quite, quite a way through this bracket. Another thing to mention is Deadpool 2 will be coming out while we are doing this bracket. Um, which but, might give Deadpool a boost. The, the really difficult one, assuming that Deadpool does beat Wolverine... I think Deadpool versus Spider-Man 2 is going to be a really interesting battle. Yeah. Because on the one hand, you have uh, a very irreverent satire parody of the superhero genre. And one, you have a very earnest, um, honest portrayal of the superhero genre that's really just doing its best to tell an honest story. Uh, and, and so they're kind of opposite ends of the spectrum, those two movies. And both do exactly what they were trying to do 
really, really well. And I think that might be maybe the most interesting lineup, uh, assuming yeah. that they both move move on. Yeah, I think when uh, you're looking at this bracket, like I said, the first round might be kind of uh, you know straightforward. You can assume what's going to move on, but stuff is going to get a lot more difficult going forward after that. I do want to really quick before we move on to the bottom half of our bracket, I do want to discuss some of the Marvel films that didn't make the cut in either of these two brackets. Um, so in the uh, in the non um, MCU bracket, we have uh, films like none of the Fantastic Four films made it, um, none of the Ghost Rider films made it, uh, none of the Punisher films made it. Um, Daredevil and Elektra didn't make it. Uh, Blade Trinity, uh, Origins Wolverine didn't make it. Um, so, and, and the newer one, Apocalypse, didn't make it. So, just to give you guys an idea of, you know, ranking-wise, these are the top 16, and the, they had to beat out a significant group, but a group that I think most people would agree probably doesn't deserve to be in this discussion about, you know, who, which film is the best. Right. Um, so, and even still, even after those films getting knocked out, we still have some films that are in this that are like, oh, well, yeah, that one's gonna, like, you can pretty much assume Spider-Man 3 is gonna lose immediately in the first round. Um, I... I, I it, like Spider-Man 3 more than The Amazing Spider-Man 2. 2. Uh, that, that's the other one. I was like, like may, if, we, if there's one other film maybe that's that's the, that's yeah. maybe as bad, it might be that one. But yeah. um, I mean, I even like the Amaz- or Spider-Man 3 more than the, the Eric Bana Hulk, if we're being honest. Yeah, well, yeah, and I mean, it is, it is slightly, it is uh, seated slightly higher. So, but yeah. then going into, going back and looking at the MCU bracket, obviously... There were only three films that didn't make it in. Uh, right. I, you probably saw, you probably noticed which ones they were. They're the ones that most people regard as the lowest. Uh, Iron Man 2, uh, The Incredible Hulk, that's the Edward Norton one, and Thor The Dark World. Most people regard those films as the black eyes of uh, the MCU. I actually like Iron Man 2, and I don't I think like- The Incredible Hulk... I think it had a lot of potential, but it's very clear what went wrong in the production of that film with the different people... Edward Norton! (laughs) With the different people trying to basically pull the film in their own direction and, you know, the different visions on screen. It had some potential, but obviously I understand why it's not going to make this bracket. Honestly, Um, I kind of just think they should go back... They should make a a Hulk standalone movie and it can be in the continuity as that one and just do almost it exactly the same but with with Ruffalo instead. And I mean, I, I would watch it. Like... So, so those are the those are the films that made it through for Marvel. Um, so now we're going to jump into our bottom half of our bracket, and we're going to start off with the DC bracket. So our first match is the number one seed, The Dark Knight, versus the number sixteen seed, Suicide Squad. And the winner of that will be going up against the number eight seed, Superman Returns, which, unless I'm mistaken, is the recent one from like two thousand five. Yes, with Brandon Ruff. Yes, uh, going up against Batman, the 1989 Tim Burton Batman, which is our number nine seed. Then we've got Superman 2 as a five seed against Constantine as a 12 seed. Uh, Which will go up against the winner of The Dark Knight Rises, which is the number four seed, the uh, final in the Chris Nolan trilogy. Uh, Going up against Justice League, which only recently came out, and the number 13 seed. Then we've got Batman Begins as a number six seed going up against Man of Steel in the number 11 spot. Which will go up against the winner of Wonder Woman, our third seed in this, in this chunk, going up against Batman Forever, the 14 seed. Then in our last sub-bracket of this, we've got Batman Returns, the number seven seed going up against Watchmen as the number 10 seed. And our final matchup is Superman, which is the number sec- two seed. Uh, going up against Batman versus Superman, the number 15 seed. Yeah, so again, you know, as we said before in, in the non-MCU Marvel bracket, I think the first round of this bracket is pretty straightforward. Things start to get a little bit more difficult as you go through, but I think the obvious standout, in, in terms of first round matches, I think Batman Begins versus Man of Steel, you're going to see maybe a close match because and I, I hate maybe, Man of Steel, but uh, I yeah. know that a lot of people really like it. I think that people that loved Superman before they saw Man of Steel dislike it, but there are people that didn't love Superman before they saw Man of Steel and were like, oh, finally a Superman that I don't hate. 
Um, which, because because it's a very different character. Yeah. Uh, I think another close one in this first round is going to be Batman Returns versus Watchmen. Um, Batman Returns is the is the second in the you know eighties and nineties Batman trilogy that was also directed by Tim Burton. Danny DeVito is is the Penguin in it, and it is a very specific tone that I think a lot of people dislike. Well, uh, versus. And- and, and that's the thing, is both of those films, this is why I think that yeah. match will be close, is that both of those films have, have very specific groups of people that like them and that follow them and that are into them. And, and very specific groups of people that dislike them. Yes. And I think there's, I don't think there's going to be a lot of overlap. I think yeah. you're either in the Batman Returns camp or you're in the Watchmen camp. Yeah. And so we'll see which camp is bigger, I guess. But I think the obvious standouts, obviously our number one and our number two seed, Dark Knight and Superman, they represent two very different uh, styles of uh, comic book movie storytelling uh, and two very different eras. And they also, I think, represent some of the best of comic book movie storytelling. Um, I think Dark Knight is the, the clear winner of this bracket, but you also have... Wonder I mean, Woman. I don't. I as to the me, number three my scene. favorite of the Chris Nolan is Batman. Is is actually Batman Begins. So I would have been happy to see that go far. But I mean, I think that we're forgetting that it's going to go up against probably Wonder Woman in the second round. Um, you know, that's going to be another interesting one in this in this first round. Wonder Woman versus Batman Forever. I think Wonder Woman will kill Batman Forever. Uh, but I think that Batman Forever is a very fun movie, and it was exactly what it wanted to be, and it's goofy and weird, and and Wonder Woman was the opposite of that. And, and again, they were both exactly what they wanted to be. Uh, and I think that people probably just respond much more highly to one of those, especially in terms of quality filmmaking. Uh, so we'll probably see Batman Begins go up against Wonder Woman, which will be a really interesting uh, battle. Yeah, my guess is that we get the Dark Knight versus Wonder Woman as our final matchup in this bracket. Um, I would assume Dark Knight comes out on top, but you can't uh, count Wonder Woman out. It's, Certainly. It, I mean, I kind of hope it's Dark Knight versus Superman just so it's Batman versus Superman. Um. <laughs> that, and, and that would be pretty cool. Um, yeah. But we'll see. We'll see what you guys vote on. Um, some some notable omissions that missed the cut. Some uh, some films that didn't make it just in. Just to prove that there is a bottom on this <laughs> Yeah, yeah. When you have Suicide Squad as the number sixteen, you might be wondering how much lower can it go. But it can go lower because the answer is uh, we got Green Super Suit, Green Lantern, uh, Catwoman, uh, Batman and Robin, um, Superman three. Um, you got Jonah Jonah Hex. Jonah Hex. I think. Yeah, um, which and, you don't and, remember Jonah Hex. Uh, it didn't make enough at the box office to even qualify, but also keep in mind that they, I think they reshot like 60 pages of that movie in a week and a half, which is never yeah. a good sign. Yeah, and then there were some other DC films that also didn't make the cut. Um, there were some Marvel films too that, that we didn't even mention that, that didn't even make the the qualification, but um, yeah. but yeah, so... So that's where our DC bracket is. That's what that's what we're looking at for uh, going into that. And um, the winner of that bracket will be going up against the winner of the independent bracket, um, which is a whole bunch of different comic publishers um, and and their films. And this bracket, to me, is one of the most interesting because there's so many films that you guys you might not realize like. Oh man, I totally forgot about that because it's not necessarily like that DC or Marvel. You right. don't remember. This is where we get a bonus from saying comic book movies and not superhero movies because many of these in this list are not superhero movies. Many of these. Well, in this I would list say I would say maybe half of these in this yeah, list. Yeah, well, not. yeah. Um, and some of them, they're the, the characters don't have any kind of superpower. Um, but as cool. comic books, they're they're wonderful comics, and for many of these films, their adaptations were you know very worthy of being included on this list. Absolutely. There are some yeah. there are some other you know omissions that didn't make this cut. Like we said, there were forty four films in this category that had yeah. to cut down to sixteen. So, so we'll just, get into some of those. This is in your a reminder second. that other publishers exist. Go to your local <laughs> comic book shop and ask about Dark Horse and ID, IDW and all these great publishers that aren't Marvel and DC, because there's a lot of really great books out there. Yeah, so we're going to jump right into this bracket, start 
just listing them off. So our first matchup is the number one seed, Men in Black versus Red at the number 16 spot. All right, and our next matchup is Dread, which is the number eight seed. That's not Judge Dread, the Sly Stallone movie from the 90s. That's the uh, Carl Urban Dread uh, versus Atomic Blonde, which only came out last summer as our number nine seed. Then we've got Road to Perdition as the number five versus Kick-Ass at the number 12 spot. And the winner of that will face the winner of Scott Pilgrim versus The World, the number four seed, versus Kingsman, the number 13 seed. Then we go Hellboy, the first one, uh, is the number six, versus The Mask, the Jim Carrey film from the 90s, uh, in the number 11 spot. All right, and going up against that will be uh, the winner of Hellboy 2, The Golden Army, which is the number three seed, versus V for Vendetta, the number 14 seed. Then we've got The Crow at the number seven seed versus Sin City at the 10 spot. And our final match of the whole bracket is A History of Violence, the number two seed versus Wanted, uh, the number 15 seed. This is, the, this is also a James McAvoy movie and also uh, Chris Pratt is in it as well. So we have uh, some other characters from the MCU and the Marvel movies showing up here in Wanted. Yeah, and with these independent, uh, you know, we mentioned with some of these films in this bracket, you know, there are some that are superheroes, um, but a lot of them are just really good comic books and good comic book adaptations even. Um, Some that people don't even necessarily think about when they think about comic books, like Road to Perdition or History of Violence. Yeah, I didn't realize those were based on comic books at all. But then you've got other ones that are really strong comic books that aren't necessarily superheroes, but they're very clearly comic books like Sin City or... Scott Pilgrim um, versus the World. Even Kick-Ass, you could make an argument, oh, well, they don't have powers, you know, do they count as superheroes? But these are all based on comic books, and that's our bracket. But it's a lot of really, really great films, a lot of fun films, and just overall just good films. Yeah. Um, There are some that didn't make this cut that I was, you know, because we're out of 44, there are some that I was, like, a little bummed, like, 300, uh, you know, it's not the best film, but, like, in terms of comic book adaptations, it's definitely one that's remembered a lot, Um, and then it's also just, it's a lot of fun, I think, Um, none of the uh, original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies made this, which really bummed me out, they're... Their critic scores are just a little too low. Um, From Hell, Alan Moore, uh, From Hell did not make it. So, you know, there were quite a few on this list um, that that didn't make it, that it was a little sad. This did have 44 uh, films in the category, and we didn't split it. So this is the category that has the most films that didn't make it. Uh, that said, yeah. I think we've got some really great contenders on here that's going to make for some really interesting matchups. Well, and in addition, because it wasn't split from those 44, it means that our first round for this bracket is probably one of the tougher brackets yeah. in terms of first round matches. Because, I mean, you've got people in in lots of different camps on all these different films. I mean, just to start it off, I mean, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World... Versus Kingsman. And Scott Pilgrim is a four seed, and Kingsman is only 13. This match is going to be is going to be nuts. Yeah, I think you've got some diehard fans for both of those films. Um, that one, I expect, is going to be really close. Similarly, um, uh, Hellboy 2 and V for Vendetta. V for Vendetta yeah. is one of those movies that I know, at least in college, we, we broke that out every November the 5th, and we watched it every year. Uh, and it's so it's got some diehard fans behind it. Um, so I think it'll be really interesting to see these sort of perhaps more loved, lower seated movies going up against movies that are still very well liked and respected. I mean, Scott Pilgrim, I know a lot of people love that, but it didn't get nearly like the acclaim and international like love that Kingsman did. Um, well, and then you've got films like Kick Ass versus Road to Perdition, that matchup is going to be really interesting to me because I think, you know, Road to Perdition is a five seed, and I think anyone who's seen that film knows how powerful of a film it is and knows that it's, you know, it deserves to, to push through 
this first round, but when it's going up against a film like Kick Ass, which again, and you've got people voting on this as a comic book movie bracket, you know, that's a hard matchup. Yeah, especially because I mean, a gangster movie doesn't feel like a comic book movie. Kick Ass yeah. definitely feels like a comic book movie. Yeah. Um, over the top villains. You know, I mean, there's a Batman parody as one of the main characters. Um, so I definitely think this is going to be an interesting bracket. I think we should talk about that Men in Black is number one. Um, yeah. That's a movie that well, like, I grew up with. Sequels, none of its sequels made the cut. Right. So. Well, they didn't deserve to. But the first one, <laughs> I mean, that's a movie I grew up with, but I never thought about it, A, as a comic book movie, or B, as even a particularly good movie. I have always liked it, but I was, you know... Like, 12 when it came out, of course I'm going to like it. Um, but I didn't realize that it was that highly regarded um, by, like, yeah. critically acclaimed, like, the critic Rotten Tomatoes. Um, well, you know, Tommy Lee Jones does an amazing job in that movie. And so and does... Will Smith, um, this was at peak Will Smith yeah. time. This was when Will Smith was just like... He was so at peak Will Smith. Don't forget that he released a music video of him rapping the Men in Black theme song... With the CGI alien from the movie. <laughs> like, definitely this a product was, of the this 90s. This was like when everything he did was just, like, it, it, he, was the, he was the Dwayne Johnson. He was the rock just gonna, yeah. of, of the 90s in a way. I mean, you could make an argument for a lot of different people. I mean, we have the mask on here, and you could make that argument for, like, Jim Carrey. Um, yeah, but, but, I mean, like, but, everything that... Will uh, Will Smith, I feel like, is one of those actors who, if he does a bad movie, we don't blame Will Smith. Like, oh, it's not your <laughs> Wild fault. Wild Wild West. Right. It's like, oh, you did, I loved you Wild did as Wild best West. as you could. It's fine. <laughs> and we, the same with Dwayne Johnson. It's like, oh, you did your best. It's fine. Like, no one blames you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, so, anyway, this is our independent bracket. And uh, the winner is going up against the winner of the DC bracket. Do you have anyone that you think... We said a lot of these matches look really close. Do you have anyone that you think is is the most obvious uh, to move onto the Final Four? I mean, part of me wants to say... Like, my gut instinct, if I'm going to be like, choose one, go, i got to say Kingsman. Um, just because it, like, it was liked by people who don't like that kind of movie and I think that says a lot um, the the sort of ballet of death sequence in that movie got so much love um, and I think I mean it was great stunt choreography everybody in that movie came together to make exactly the movie they wanted to so I think Kingsman certainly can't be counted out uh, and if I have to pick just one it's that one even though it's on the back in the lower seed if I'm picking one movie to, to, to go that's my guess how about you yeah I I think I think this is a hard. This is the hardest one to choose who moves on. I think DC's obvious to me. It's Dark Knight. Uh, non MCU Marvel is obvious to me. It's Logan. Uh, MCU Marvel. That one's a little tougher. Uh, but this one is equally as tough, or maybe tougher than the MCU bracket. I would say. I agree with what you say about Kingsman. I think it has a very good shot because of those reasons that you said. Um, but I also think um, you can't count out the films like Road to Perdition or A History of Violence. I'll be um, honest, I haven't seen either of those. So I probably need well, to. See, but that is what I think is going to work against them. Yeah. And so even they're, though they're higher seeds, you know, Road to Perdition's in the middle. But I, I think I would say... You're probably looking at Men in Black because so many people know yeah, that one. I think and that have that certainly wins have so much in, its, fun. in its chunk. It'll beat Red. It'll beat Dread or Atomic Blonde, probably. I think then you've got Kingsman, like you said. Yeah. I think V for Vendetta. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then I think probably Sin City. Yeah, I think the, I agree you know, with the all the first those. one. Yeah. So going forward from that group. It's it's really tough. I I think you know maybe it comes down to, I think maybe Men in Black. Um, I could see that honestly. I think Men in Black or Kingsman have a better chance of beating uh, Sin City or V for Vendetta in part because of how they make you feel. Men in Black is a comedy. It's sort of hopeful. 
Obviously, Kingsman 2, it, it's maybe very violent, but it's fun and it's hopeful. Whereas Sin City and V for Vendetta are, are much more tragic and they leave you yeah. much more sort of, um, I don't want to say with a bad taste in your mouth, but they certainly leave you, they're not hopeful movies. They're not inherently... They're unsettling. Yeah. They're unsettling. Yeah, which they're and supposed they're, they're to be. They're supposed to be. Yeah. So, so, they're, they're, so they're great films because of it, but it is going to impact... Their enjoyability, right. their especially if you consider like rewatchability. Like I've yeah. seen Sin City, I don't know, maybe twice, and like it's really good, and I've really liked it both times I've watched it. But I've been like, you know, both of the times I've been like, I need to, I need a palate cleanse after that. Like, let's yeah. put on some Office or something. Uh, well, either way, whatever does end up taking this bracket, I'm gonna have fun watching this one move yeah. because I think, I think it could you really. Know, I don't have any real preferences yeah. in this in this bracket. Um, I mean, I have ones, like, I have personal ones that if I were doing this bracket, obviously, I would choose certain ones. But um, in terms of, you know, am I going to be heartbroken if something moves on and something else doesn't? I don't think so. Yeah, I think this I bracket, I'm going to be able to enjoy the most because of that. Whereas some of the other brackets, it's going to be like, oh, no, that's mine. You know, that that can't be beaten out. Yes. But, if, the, if the Suicide Squad beats, beats the Dark Knight, Neil will cry himself to sleep for well. the rest of the week. <laughs> I probably will the, too. Hey, the Oscar winning, <laughs> Oscar winning Suicide, Suicide Squad, Squad. <laughs> versus the Oscar winning uh, Dark Knight. Yeah, right? that's, it's fair. They're both Legend. they're both the Oscar they're winners. They're both Oscar winners. So that is it's gonna be a tough match. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So that is our comic book movie bracket. We are um, really, really excited to do this one. If you couldn't tell, we're both huge fans of comic book movies and blockbuster movies and these big, huge spectacle movies. Uh, and, and so I, we're both really looking forward to this one. Yeah, and, and like we said at the beginning, we did this um, you know, with Infinity War coming out, with Deadpool 2 around the corner. You know, We've got all sorts of movies coming out this summer that are going to just this get summer our... and every summer until we die <laughs> <laughs> well and and it's great that now it's not just limited to summer but summer summertime is the big time for people to really get excited about comic book movies yeah. um and so what we want you guys to do is to get excited with us you know jump in make sure you're voting share this video around we're going to one of the things that we're going to try to do, which we didn't do in the past, was we're going to try to limit or, or hide the results to the voting. This is why so we're not that, sure about how we're going to do the voting. And on Facebook, yeah. when you vote, you see the results and then there's no fun. Like, this video is kind of, you know, pointless. You already know yeah. who won. Uh, we yeah. want it so, to be exciting and to be an un 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 unveiling, you know. Yeah, we want you guys to tune in with us and to, you know... Find out with us because the way we do this, I'll find out what the wh who won so I can kind of calculate scores and stuff like that. Um, but shortly I don't. before the show starts, but Rick will not know, and so we'll basically be both discussing these as if we're both just finding out. And you know, if you're kind of in that same boat with us, then it, I think it's a lot of fun. You know, getting to kind of share each other's opinions, and you guys can jump on and jump into the comment section and let us know what you think about right. the results. We'll tell so, you which matches made us cry, but you got to tell us which ones made you cry. Otherwise, we're just two idiots. You know. So we really want you guys to get involved and make sure you're voting and share these videos around and and just, you know get the word out because if there's only 50 people voting on this then it's not the most i mean you know we jokingly say we're turning our our subjective opinions into objective facts but clearly we want some objectivity to this right right so, so the more people to vote the more objective a bracket it is yeah exactly so we want you guys to get involved and we need you guys to be sharing this to be liking this to be subscribing hit the, hit the notifications bell um we will have, uh, you know, in the description, if you go down there, you can follow us on Twitter, uh, Instagram. You can uh, jump, follow the uh, And That's a Fact Facebook group uh, where, we'll, where we'll be posting all our updates. Um, We're going to try and, and do as much as we can. Apparently, fewer and fewer people are using Facebook, but we're old, so we don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> but we're gonna try and do a lot. I know YouTube has a great community, and we're gonna be trying. To, we're gonna try and be active in that. So be active with us. Comment, like, do all the stuff, and uh, enjoy the 
this these movies with us. Yeah, and check out some of our other videos on our channel. Yeah, so, our other videos, our other bracket is wrapping up now, the Disney Pixar bracket. We're about to shoot another video for that, so go and vote on those too if you're a big Disney fan. Yep. So, but that that's going to be it for today for our preview show. Uh, the next time um, we see you guys talking about comic books, uh, round one will have been voted on. So, uh, keep in mind, the voting is going to be dropping staggered. Um, over the course of this week. So make sure that um, you know, you're know you checking the description for the voting, checking our, fi- our Twitter because we'll have the links up there and everything like that um, so that you guys can get your votes in. Because um, like we said, we want to wait until Infinity Wars had at least a week out in theaters. Um, Before but, we yeah, spoil so, the crap out of it. <laughs> yeah, so the next time we see you guys talking about comic books, it's going to be after round one has wrapped up. Uh, I'm really excited for that, and I can't wait um, to get started on this. Yeah, and we're going to find right out objectively what the best comic book movie is, and it'll it'll be fact at that point. Once we decide it, it'll be a fact. Yep, and that's a fact. See you guys later. Bye.